Lawrence from Rocky Mountain Family Medicine. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. So um, tell us a little bit about your clinic, you and like how you started, why you decided to come and practice in Wyoming, things like that. Okay, yeah. Um, so I've been in Wyoming now for about 14 years. Um, after medical school, I decided to um, take my residency training up here to Casper, where we have a great residency program for uh, training in rural health and family medicine. And um, after finishing residency, uh, my wife and I really enjoyed Casper, so we decided to stay and uh, open a practice together with a friend of mine after residency and have been doing this for uh, we just had our 10 year anniversary in August of last year. So um, yeah, things have been going great. That's awesome. Where are you from? Where were you? Where did you go to med school? I'm originally from, uh, well, I grew up in Texas, went to med, uh, college, medical school all in Texas too. So, uh, but I, it was, you know, with, the, with a lot of the oil here, there's a lot of Texas, Texas folk up here as well too. So That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so there's a lot of talk of, you know, with all the changes that have happened in the last couple of few weeks, mm -hmm. there's a lot of talk of telemedicine. And so, first of all, tell us the difference between telemedicine and telehealth. Okay. And then um, tell us how that's kind of changed how you do medicine. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we've, um, oh, so telemedicine, uh, we, we define it as, uh, so that's medical. So physicians, um, uh, doing communication um, through these means. Telehealth uh, encompasses uh, many other realms of, of health. So uh, counseling, which is, you know, we've had a, a tele, telehealth through that for quite some time. Um, even physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, dietetics, nutrition. Um, so there's many ways to do telehealth. Um, but uh, now we've got thrown into uh, the telemedicine side of things very quickly with this coronavirus. And um, it's been uh, drastic changes, but uh, we've uh, adopted uh, very quickly and very well, and patients are enjoying it, and they feel more comfortable being in the comfort of their home. And uh, there really isn't too many limitations towards what we can do um, over telehealth compared to an office visit. There is or there isn't? Uh, not, not so much. There's a, maybe a small number of of, of visits that make it a little bit uh, more challenging, but for most part, we, um, you know, getting a good history and, and getting a good, uh, being able to talk and then even see some things face to face has made it, um, we can get a, a good diagnosis and feel comfortable with our diagnosis and just establish a treatment plan and we can order blood work if we need to go to the lab to get it. We can, uh, we've had people driving up to get uh, flu swabs and, and strep swabs and from their car and um, we can uh, send in prescriptions to the pharmacy and some of those are even delivering now too. So uh, it's very, very, everything's going pretty quickly as far as adapting with this uh, telemedicine. So. I have to tell you that, you know, at the beginning of this, when you post, when you all posted on Facebook, what you were doing, I felt mm -hmm. relieved. I felt mm -hmm. like, you know, there were some options and um, it just made me feel good. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And we've actually had um, tele, we've had the capabilities of doing this for some time. Our main restrictions have been through uh, insurance coverage with it. So most of the time people were having to pay out of pocket, you know, do a credit card online for a visit. But, but in, with the coronavirus, uh, very quickly, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, most, all, almost all major um, healthcare insurances are allowing to do telemedicine and um, and uh, they're, they're covered visits as well, too, just like an in-office visit would be. Definitely. Um, so are you, is it just established patients that can use this? Uh, that's how we had initially planned it, um, but we have been taking on some new patients. I've got some connections up in, in Midwest, and uh, because they're remote where they're at, we've been doing a few new patients there. I've got some connections with a few of the uh, assisted living facilities in town, which are essentially on lockdown, and uh, we've been offering our services to patients we haven't seen before there for acute type of visits. It's not picking up, you know, all of their, their chronic care and long-term care type of stuff, but uh, being able to take care of them uh, remotely as we established uh, means of doing telehealth with some of the nurses in those facilities too, so. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What kind of technology do you need to do um, the, the telemedicine? Um, so it's, it's really simple. Um, it's um, you know, oftentimes a laptop that has a, has a, a webcam built into it. Um, I've had people use their, their iPads, um, tablets, um, smartphones. Um, and so 
Uh, I think most people out there have the technology to, be able to do it. Some of the limitations I've seen are associated with the, uh, if you're using a, a, a tablet or a smartphone and having a good internet connection to be able to keep up with it. But if that happens, we, we sometimes we could do the video and then just make a phone call and, and talk on the phone at the same time too. So um, we uh, haven't, we haven't really run into too many barriers with um, the the technology side of things. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. <clears throat> so, of course, um, I want to ask about the coronavirus. You are a doctor of osteopathy. Did I say that right? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, so tell everybody what that is, first of all. Um, so there's two uh, groups of licensed physicians that can diagnose and treat in the United States, the, the MD and then the DO. Um, DOs make, or Dr. Vasiopathy or DO make about 10% of physicians in the United States and they tend to gravitate more towards rural areas, but um, we, uh, the training is very similar. That it's uh, initially started off as more of kind of a whole person approach, but a lot of the MD schools have uh, take that approach now as well too. Um, but also we spend some extra time in medical school learning how to treat with our using our hands. And so we'll do some um, uh, for musculoskeletal type of injuries or for other um, uh, conditions that may uh, be appropriate, then we can uh, do some almost similar like chiropractic techniques to be able to uh, treat. Just it's like another, we call it another tool in our tool belt. We'd have that, you know, or you know, prescribing things or um, therapy, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and so that's that's the, the the main difference there. But they go into every specialty in town. We have uh, DOs and emergency room you know, and mm -hmm. orthopedics and um, uh, gastroenterology, everything. So, is it also more natural? Uh, I, I think we, yeah, I I, uh, I think with that whole person approach, you know, looking at everything, and we we do try to uh, not just jump into you know prescribing things and trying to utilize some of our. Um, natural methods that uh, that our body has to be able to enhance that to fight disease and prevent disease too. So I think okay. we take a little more of a prevention approach as most uh, osteopaths are going to primary care and family family practice too. So There's a lot of controversy around what you should do to prevent the coronavirus. Um, of course, stay home. But what are there other things that I don't know, think or what we were talking about before? What what mm -hmm. could we do? Uh, yeah, so the biggest ones, you know, washing your hands um, and, uh, and uh, social distancing, and so being able to avoid exposures to respiratory droplets um, and or, or others that may have it and just don't have um, symptoms just yet too. Um, uh, cough, cough, if you have a cough, cover your, cover your mouth. Um, if anybody comes in here with a cough, they have to have a mask. So, um, and then um, uh, other things, uh, it sounds... Uh, like something we say all the time, but you know, uh, exercise, being able to have a good, that will help keep, give you a good strong immune system, having a healthy diet, not eating fast food all the time or processed food all the time, getting your fruits and vegetables, uh, it's gonna give you all your vitamins and minerals that you need. Staying well hydrated, a lot of people don't keep up with their water very well, but staying well hydrated is gonna help your immune system out. Um, yeah, we talked about a few other things as well too. Uh, zinc is something that's been shown uh, to fight the common cold, which is a version of the coronavirus. And so um, could it be used as prevention? Uh, viruses don't live as long on zinc as they do on other things. So the thoughts are that if you have zinc lozenges, then it may coat the, uh, the areas in the back of your mouth where these things tend to get into your system and um, cause problems. And then it may be able to kill them off quicker so it doesn't uh, turn into a full blown infection. So um, other than that, you know, there's been a lot of studies on a lot of herbals and things like that too, but it really kind of goes back and forth and there's not, we haven't had enough time to do a lot of studies on coronavirus as well, and particularly for, for prevention. But um, yeah, the biggest things are definitely the, um, the high, hand hygiene and, and the uh, distancing. So mm -hmm. what about, there's been a lot of stuff, I mean, you know, a lot of people look on Facebook, right? So. Uh, <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about not taking ibuprofen or elderberry. Okay. Yeah, and so that's that's been back and forth as well too. There was initially a big uh, push about the ibuprofen, um, and then that's been uh, uh, hasn't been significantly proven. Um, I, I could say that there's probably a lot of other reasons not to take ibuprofen. Um, uh, 
it, it's hard in your kidneys, it's hard in your stomach, it's been shown to increase the risk of heart disease. And so um, if you can avoid ibuprofen altogether, that would be great. Uh, but uh, as far as with the coronavirus, it hasn't been shown definitely that it's gonna uh, increase your chance of getting it. Um, but, uh, and, and the same with elderberry as well too. That's one that's kind of gone back and forth. Um, I know there's some, some uh, data out there previously about um, prevention of, of viruses and illnesses utilizing um, elderberry, but um, I wouldn't, uh, if, I wouldn't say avoid it uh, altogether um, or utilizing it um, is, is uh, gonna make near the difference that of, um, of the uh, hand hygiene and those other preventative measures we were talking about, so. So when when somebody thinks they need to be tested, mm -hmm. what are the symptoms that they need to be worried about that they need to come get a test? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so um, and, and the, there's a great uh, site on the Wyoming Department of Health website. If you go, just go click on there, it will take you to the coronavirus page and they are keeping it up three times a day, they'll put on there the cases that we've had per county. And also if you dive a little deeper into it, they'll put in the most common symptoms that people are having that are presenting with it. By far cough, um, secondary is gonna be uh, fever. Um, and then you get into a sore throat and body aches and uh, muscle aches and a few other things as you go down the list there too. Um, but some people may just present with diarrhea and we're seeing that it's also being shed possibly in stools as well too so um and um and then of course there's the asymptomatic groups that we're still learning about so the people because of the limitation of tests that we have we're only testing people that um are uh, sick or showing symptoms and they're even the high risk ones and so there's uh, gonna be the whole group out there of people that um may have had it thought they had a cold and and now we're going to find out that they did have it um so um, um yeah so, so so much more information to come out from this um for for now but uh um but for right now yeah those are the main symptoms that we want to look for or consider being tested for so mm -hmm. is there a low amount of tests because it's a new it's a bit relatively new virus is that why we have you know kind of a shortage of that Right, yeah, so there's limitations. There's the ability to test um, at the Wyoming Department of Health. Um, and a lot, initially all our tests were going to the CDC, but now we're able to expand some of those testing capabilities. My understanding, Wyoming Medical Center is supposed to get um, one of the machines that can test um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, there's been FDA approval of a, a, a blood, a rapid blood, um, blood poke test as well too, where you can get results just like you would your flu test within about 15 minutes. Um, there are limitations to all these tests though and so they're not 100% um, and but with their, I know they should be shipping out the, the rapid test soon we should be getting ours within a couple weeks um, to be able to test for but uh, right now if you it only it's it, it's not very accurate if you have had symptoms for more than five days and so it's almost like you have to uh, you know, quarantine yourself for those five days then you can be tested and find out later on if you had it or not so are they using any prescription drugs um, to kind of attack this or not? Uh, there was some talk about, uh, yes, yeah, some high prescription drugs and we've been keeping up on it. Hydroxychloroquine was one of them, azithromycin is another one they're looking into. Um, and there's some right now, wait, since we don't, um, no, I, they're, they are using some of that um, if it's safe for the patients they're giving it to. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, a lot of the, the higher risk patients that are uh, more prone to having uh, or uh, succumbing to the, the coronavirus um, already have other issues going on. And so some of those medications can be more harmful for them to take and more riskier for them to take. But, um, but right now we'll, we'll use the things that we think may be, may be beneficial. Um, and even some of those medications we've been seeing limitations on able to get, just like you may see limitations on getting your ibuprofen and your zinc lozenges at you know, Walmart or Walgreens too. So, <laughs> um, so uh, it's, it's not definitive yet. And some, initially we did see that some of those could be beneficial, but there's not a, there's not a cure all for it. There's not anything that says, yeah, this is gonna knock it out. You know, not too much different than our than our common cold that we we've had forever. You know, that's been around. We still don't have a, a good treatment for that either. So, you know. the other thing that I can't seem to find is an, um, hand sanitizer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wash your hands. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Everything's quite limited. Uh, soap and water works really well, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so what would you recommend for people who don't have a primary care provider right now? Um, it's uh, probably a little challenging to get in to see one right now, but uh, we're there and, and sometimes we have limitations in our, in our area of uh, having um, physicians around to be able to get a, a primary care provider. But um, I think in the next uh, upcoming months as this blows over, our, our primary care provider can be the person that's there for um, chronic conditions and also for acute visits as well too. For example, in our office, you know, we see, we schedule patients regularly, but there's still um, half a dozen for each one of our providers of acute visits per day that we don't even fill till uh, you call that day too. So if you get sick or um, need stitches or anything like that, then we want to get you in to help take care of it um, right away. So it's nice to have some kind of continuity where you have somebody that knows you, knows about you, um, and knows some of your history, rather than um, always having to go to an urgent care or go to the emergency room for services that can definitely be much more costly as well too. Um, so we see it as a, as a time saver, a money saver and a, and a time saver. Um, and, uh, and oftentimes insurances, they'll cover your, your checkups once a year without any out-of-pocket cost to, and even host the blood work based on what there was needed for prevention. Um, primary care providers focus uh, a lot on prevention as well too. So our, we say we want to try to just see you in here for the preventive visits. So I don't have to see you along the way for other problem visits that we may have heading into the, into the future. So, mm -hmm. What providers do you have? Uh, so we uh, right pardon or newer she's been there a couple months uh, yes yeah so we recently have a new physician's assistant uh, Robin Morrison and so she's been um, helping pick up some of the some of the load um, and then we also have uh, Jane Filming she's been a nurse practitioner here for the last six to seven years and so we have a really good crew right now and then we have some uh, MAs that are medical assistants that are. Um, seasoned and, and well trained as well, and so oftentimes they can answer a lot of questions um, over the phone. Um, and um, but uh, having having the three providers in the office regularly, we can um, you know usually take care of things uh, fairly quickly and rapidly for you. So awesome! Is there anything else you want to tell us about Rocky Mountain Family Medicine? Um, well, we see everything from, from kids, and so uh, as soon as you walk out of the hospital with a newborn all the way up to, I think we have a 101 is our call it, ISO. Everything from uh, geriatrics to kids, uh, we uh, go to the nursing home. We've recently started going to a couple of assisted livings as well, too, so we're trying to not only see people in the office, but also uh, bring, them to, bring them to you. Um, uh, we're still accepting new patients right now as well, too. Um, and um, yeah, and, and I feel like we have, a, we have a really good practice that you know, focuses on prevention, but is also there for anything that you uh, need along the way for your health, so. I was talking to a friend of mine who lives in a big city and um, I was telling her about you and she said, <laughs> you guys are so lucky there because you have somebody that knows you and knows mm -hmm. your history. When she goes to the doctor, it, it doesn't seem like that. She doesn't even know she gets the right, the same doctor every time. So oh. I, I think we are, you know, when you when you think about it that way, we are super lucky here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I don't I don't think I consider myself as old fashioned or anything like that, but I do like that getting that personal approach and getting to know patients and and uh, even knowing things like about their background and their family history and their occupation helps a lot too when we're trying to um, figure out what's going on with their health too. So, yeah, I think she might have used the word old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But that's okay. We, you know, sometimes I'm asked in Wyoming, do you still, do you have electricity? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay. Where are you located? Um, we are out on East second street. So out near um, uh, Wyoming Ale Works and fire rock around that area. Um, there's a little section with uh, several other um, uh, health, health care related offices. And so we are, we're tucked in, tucked in back there. Um, and we've been here for about this location for about five years now. Well, we, we really appreciate all of you and, and thanks for coming on here and um, and taking care of all of us while this is going on. Yeah, absolutely. I encourage the use of the telemed too. We've uh, been doing quite a bit of it and um, it, it seems to be working great. So um, I, we're really encouraging people to utilize it. So. Is it is it about the same amount of time or are you, are you able to see a few more people? 
I, I've noticed that it does not take as much time to do it. Um, and so that way we can have more visits uh, in between there too. So it's been um, helpful for that reason too. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Stay well and right. um, we really appreciate you. All right, well, thanks for having me on Alicia. Yeah. Yeah. All right, bye-bye.